What's going on, everybody? Another episode of Verbal Garbage coming at you hot and live. Fourth of July. Happy Fourth of July. Independence Day to everybody out there. Uh, uneventful day for me. I'm just kind of chilling around the house, cooking up some stuff for myself, eating a bunch of mangoes off the fresh harvest I was just able to acquire. Uh, Fourth of July, you know, amazing day. Birthday of America. Birth of our freedom. Growing up, I belonged to a I've talked about it multiple times and I'm going to keep covering it. The uh, Wexford Lee swim club and, you know, it'd be a pretty much an all inclusive day there. We think they would do a little bike parade at like 10 or 11. The swim club would open at 12. So we start the day off with a little bike parade. Right. And uh, everyone would just get on their, their bicycles, decorate them, American regalia, you know, the pride parades before they were, came into fruition we were kind of trailblazing on the fourth of july parade um my brother and i never really partook too much in that but we would always go to the swim club and just watch it and just get ready for the the pool to open uh can't exactly remember the order and all the events but just to give you guys an idea some of the activities will include you know in a pie eating contest of course um diving for pennies i don't remember and co coins i don't remember exactly how this one worked there would be coins scattered throughout the pool and you'd have a certain amount of time to, I think, go down, dive and retrieve the coins and bring them back up and put them into your cup and just keep doing. I, I can't remember exactly. I think that's what that one was. Uh, we had the greasy watermelon, which was one, run by a neighborhood figure, uh, Gar Garnovic, a big giant white man with Cambodian or Vietnamese descent. So uh, he would take the watermelon, you know, lather it up in suntan suntan lotion or uh tanning oil i don't remember exactly what rub it all over lather the watermelon up throw it in the swim club and you'd have two teams vying for the watermelon trying to gain control of it and do it that way <laughs> and i remember one year you know as we got older everyone started getting a little more aggressive and wild with the game and the king whale of the neighborhood zachary ashraf uh captain of the swim team creator of the the, the Zach dive, you know, he would always, when he would be getting tagged in for relays, you know, most people just do the, the hands over the head is like a V shape and dive, you know, like a spear into the water. Zach would do that, but he would kind of deviate his head up and do a little like Rob Van Dam style thing off the top ropes. So we would always appreciate and admire that. And we, we called him King whale, you know, before and after swim clubs, we would be doing little chants and he'd be the leader. Heidi, 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 ho! Heidi, 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 ho! Wiggly, 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 whoa! Zach would lead us to battle with the chants. And, um, you know, who knows what was going through his mind that day? Maybe it was his time to really claim the throne of the alpha male. And Gar was kind of holding the torch. And, you know, they got into a little scrap during the game. And I just remember this very well. They were in in the pool trying to wrestle the watermelon away from each other. The tensions were running high. Like I said, I think Zach was really trying to make a bid for superiority of the swim club, even though we already kind of had that leading us into battle. Um, more games included. There would be, um, we had a big diving board and they would put a, like a black inner tube in, in the, uh, we would call it like the, the well or the deep end where the diving board was set up. And you jump off the diving board and try to, essentially land with your butt going through the tube, but your limbs staying on top of it. So you'd be able to stay floated while you're on there. Amazing, amazing game. Uh, tread a thon where you again, stay in the deep end and just, just tread as long as you could. Uh, the Dolan brothers would never ever lose that one. They were the Kings of that Maddie and Frankie. I remember they would be, you know, we'd be feeding them grapes and giving them hydration breaks while they'd still be treading. And to this day, they're, Maddie, especially just a phenomenal cardio machine, a beast, CrossFit dominator. So just incredible memories with the 4th of July. You'd also, uh, right when you'd walk in, you'd see a big jar of candy and you'd have to take guesses on how many pieces of candy were in there. The winner would win all types of different prizes. Uh, and, you know, kind of as the day ran down, we would go up to the hill where we had the volleyball net and all that kind of good stuff play some volleyball, have some fun, eat some hot dogs, which I've sworn off. I fucking think those things are disgusting. And, but that was a staple back then. And, you know, we'd all just chill, eventually go home, everybody meet up and kind of go to do see fireworks together, which another thing I'm just, 
I'm not like too cool for fireworks. So just the excitement for me is just not there anymore. I don't really find any joy in it. So, you know, but great memories growing up and just an amazing time. Uh, another thing I kind of wanted to cover was, you know, the weekend just ended and I'm trying to like deviate a little bit away from sports here, but there's definitely going to have to be like episodes here and there that are dedicated where I have someone on, we talk or I just talk by myself because between the NBA free agency and football season being under 70 days away and MMA, especially the UFC, just putting out a ton of great cards and tons of stuff's going on. Uh, just to recap, the UFC 276 just happened and kind of funny because I was mentioning it last week and talking to my brother and a couple friends about it, how I'm not saying the card was cursed, but I just had a bad feeling about it due to the recent activity with some of the late the latest free cards, you know, and generally you get those ones, you don't pay for them and they turn out to be awesome. And then these ones that cost $75 just kind of leave a lot to be desired. Right. So when these cards happen, um, I, I don't mind paying for them to be honest. Like there was years where I was just paying for them all the time because when I was living in Jersey, we'd have me my brother-in-law, my sister, my dad, I'd invite two to three friends over. They would invite two to three friends over. So I'll be paying 10 to $15. Since then, it's gone up to from, I think, $59.99 to 75 bucks. So now, like, if we watch it, me and my brother and my sister in Virginia and her husband will watch it, and we just split it four ways. It's not a big deal. Um, the main event, Volkanovsky, or excuse me, Israel Adesanya and Jared Cannonier. Uh, this is, I think, the third fight in a row where Izzy's kind of went to a decision and just left a lot to be desired as far as the entertainment value. Uh, his press conferences, his interviews, his walkouts, they're always entertaining, but the fighting, I mean, listen, the guy is the one of the most polished strikers we've ever seen in the sport. So his head movement, his footwork, the way he switches stances, the way he faints and counters, it, it leads the guys that he's going against to be very hesitant and gun shy. And as you saw, Cannoneer was just very content to go to the decision. I can't blame him because the minute you start, you know, Cannoneer is known for his, his power. He moved down from heavyweight. Now he's fighting 185. But the minute you close in and try to rush is he's going to catch you with those, those counter left hooks or whatever he's going to throw at you. So uh, co-main event. Yeah. And Izzy, uh, just a real quick close out on that. He's uh, only really got one loss in MMA to, it was Jan Bohovic when he moved up and fought a guy that was much bigger than him, got grappled to fucking death and just lost not a big deal but uh, another guy he fought and lost to back in the day alex Pereira, or Pereira, however you're saying it uh brazilian dude kickboxer just moved over to mma about two years ago only has six fights in the ufc i believe now but he's next in line for a title shot he was third fight in that card got a crazy knockout so now him and adesanya are gonna have a trilogy fight where he's already won both of them so as much as we talk about Adesanya being a little bit stale lately, this gives um, us something to look forward to as far as his next fight. It's uh, got a big storyline, guy he's fought before. So we'll see how it goes. Volkanovski, Max, we don't really need to cover that too much. It was a trilogy going in. Volkanovski was already up 2 nothing. First fight, Volkanovski, I would think, kind of won the decision. Second one was a little more controversial. Maybe he get out. Maybe it was Max. So the third one was definitely going to be you know, chances for Max to come back and I'm not going to say even the score, but potentially set up a fourth fight, which is just crazy in MMA. Or Volkanovski could just close that chapter and move on. And that is what happened. He dominated Max, made him look completely out of sorts, made him look slow, couldn't couldn't connect. He's known as one of the better boxers in MMA. MMA had a really tough time with everything. So, yeah, Volkanovski is probably going to move up, take on other contenders and maybe Max – couple more fights and he'll be right back in position so we'll see um yeah i'm always having some good stores you know a big reason i wanted to do this is just even if it's 40 60 people listening a week like right now i think it's saying i'm at around like 52 listeners or something i'm just fine you know and i appreciate all you guys so much that are tuning in each week and listen to the the stories that i have between my siblings myself my parents my job just anything so, um, you know, I, the common theme is always talking about these ungrateful people, right? And these, these grumpy people. And I'm trying to do it a little bit different. Just bring my goofy immaturity, my craziness, my spunk to the shops each week. And, you know, I, I'm going to do my best not to mention a name here, but it's going to be super hard. But 
let's see what we can do. Um, and I'll try not to be specific, but I, I uh, we definitely have some guys on the route that are just, they're just grumpy. Right. And no matter what you do, no matter the energy, the jokes you provide, they're just going to stay that way. But I'm someone like, I don't mind. I'll, I'll have 30 failed jokes and I'll keep going. No one's laughing. I'll laugh myself and I'll just keep pushing through. And, you know, it's just, it, it's just such a better environment to me when everyone's smiling, laughing, having fun, especially in, I'm not going to call it intense environment when you're trying to a tense environment, when you're trying to sell to these guys. But you know, when I'm working for a company like I do, that definitely has pricey tools and you know, the way the economy is going with, everything being so expensive and people struggling, it's, it's become even harder to buy some of these tools. Right. So certain guys and certain shops and certain technicians will have these stigmas that I try not to buy much into and kind of give everyone a fair shake and treat them how I would like to be treated, you know? So yeah, months and months go by. I've been dealing with these people. They're cool. Some of them are cool. Some of them are assholes that I want over, you know, there's plenty of guys that I thought was a piece of shit. I never want to talk to them again. And now we have, a great time talking, right? So where do I even begin with this? Okay, so a couple of weeks back, I, I take uh, multiple things in for return simultaneous or not return for repair for these guys, send them all out. I, I tell them right there, and I'm mainly talking to the one guy, hey, there's about a four to seven week turnaround for repairs. You know, we send them in, we get them and we let the repairs kind of pile up and then we send them out. So you're not having to send multiple times. So I would say every two weeks we get 20 repairs in, right? And we'll send them all out. So four to seven week turnaround, I give us a little cushion. Sometimes we get them in three to four weeks, but it's usually, honestly, lately it's been seven, eight, nine, 10 weeks. And you can imagine when you see guys that pay a lot of money for these tools, which I understand the first thing they want to see to you is, Hey, where's my tool? Where is it back yet? Like, don't you think I would have the tool ready and be happy to show you because I know you're going to ask about it right away. I, that's that's one thing I just don't understand. So I take these these tools in three weeks ago, right? And last week, this and every week since, the minute I see this guy, where where is it? You know, and I usually initiate the conversation. Hey, how you doing today? What's going on? Just blows by that, just right into where where is it? So last week, you know, the same energy happened. There's two to three guys already in the truck. He, he comes moseying out in his fucking grumpy little stroll. And I can already just sense that beta body language that he's bringing in. Cause real quick, like a couple months back, he's just talking all the shit, you know, the type of thing where other guys might be interested in buying something and he'll say, Oh, it's this expensive and you're going to be in debt and all this bullshit. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know why this happened, but we were all just kind of talking and we, I noticed a little odor on the truck. And I kind of accused the guy of farting and I think he fessed up to it. And I was like, man, that smells like a beta fart. Cause I've been calling this guy beta male for a little bit, just cause he, the way he carries himself and how he acts and acts so tough, but then which goes perfectly into the story. Right. So he walks on, I'm talking to a couple of people. I'm in my normal chipper mood, very happy, very excited, just trying to sell, trying to have fun, make jokes, make people laugh. He comes on and right away, Hey, how you doing today? Where is it? So I'm like, man, can you ever just like respond with a little bit of human decency and just say, hey, how are you today, Frank? No, I'm not too, you know, just 10 seconds of common little, hey, how are you? I'm good. Not, okay, cool. Now we'll be on our merry way. But I'm not going to lie. Like I've always been someone who gets set off by these little tiny things, right? Like if I, when I'm on a bike ride, my mom always cracks up because like I'll wave to someone and they'll just like stare at me and ghost me and I'll just like ride by and be like fucking piece of shit and flip them off. I'm away. Cause I'm like, just waving to someone and waving back is so simple. And everybody I come across, whether it's walking a dog or just chill anywhere, like I always smile and wave and I just get very, I don't know why, but I just get irritated by it. So I'm just sitting there processing this, like all the times that I've tried to be nice to this guy and he's just always being like that. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Talking to the other guys, moving to the back of the truck, showing some different products that have just coming in, trying to answer questions, asking them questions about the stuff they've been using. Cause I'm, I'm totally ignorant. So I'm trying to learn. Right. So I don't know where he goes, Oh, you got my warranty tool. Cause the way snap on works is like all the hand tools, you know, chisels, punches, punches, pl oh my God, punches, chisels, pliers, screwdrivers, ratchets, sockets, all those things have a lifetime warranty. So you break the tool. You bring it up to us when we show up. If we don't have it on the truck, we'll order it. And the minute we get it, we swap them out. I, you give me the broken one. I take the good one. We swap it. I warranty out the broken one. We get credit for it. You get a new tool. 
So he right away, he's very sn- snippy to shout out and use one of my mom's word. This is two to three minutes after we just had our little, I'm not going to call it beef because it was just an everyday little comment by me. So then I get again, just rudely and aggressively. Hey, you got my warranty tool? Sure do. You got yours? No. Go fetch. All I fucking said was go fetch. You don't have your tool. I can't give you my new tool. Like if you're so hell bent on asking me every week, where's your tool? Where's your tool? Where's your tool? The repair is one thing, but if it's a warranty tool, you know, I'm going to be getting that in a relatively short period of time. So why not just bring the little, it's a small little tool to bring out, just hand it to me and then we swap it. We're good to go. But no, he doesn't. He has to make his little stink about it. So I just say, go fetch. Like I, I didn't make anything of it. I'm just like, go grab your tool so I can swap it out and give you a brand new tool. Not that your fucking box, toolbox is 250, 300 feet away. So he goes, he gets the tool and he opens the door super aggressively. And right away, you know, he, he looks at me, hands me his broken tool and by the fucking way, I didn't say anything about a fucking torque wrench goes out the truck and slams this door as hard as he fucking can. And I'm like, are you as hard as he could? And I'm just sitting there laughing. Are you kidding me? And my boss is like, just chill. Don't say anything. I'm not going to say it. Like, I'm not going to lie. If he wasn't on the truck with me, I might've popped my head out the window. and be like, are you out of breath? Like y'all good. Cause someone like him to put that kind of energy into slamming a door. It's just ridiculous. He's feeding into this every week by just being like, I get it. You might not, have the best times outside of work or something negative could have happened before. And you come on the truck and take it out on me. I get that. But at what point do you have to start reciprocating those feelings? And be like, well, maybe this guy's had a couple bad stops and maybe I should just be nice. You know, I, I'm a true believer in a smile and a little friendly conversation can help really contribute to helping someone's day out, you know? So I'm just laughing. I'm sitting there. I'm like, wow, that's how he's going to react after I just give him a little bit back when he's giving me this the whole time. So like, you know, that whole saying, if you can't stand the heat, get the fuck out of the kitchen. It's so true. I, I've been telling people this last week. And if you guys know me, you know, I, I consider myself to have a PhD in shit talking. Like I am very quick witted. I can come back with comebacks. I can, but like, if you're coming on the truck and you're nice to me or every day, like, I'm not going to be shitty to you. Let's just, let's be cool. But I just find it funny, some of these people that they're so rude, they're so nasty, and the minute you meet their energy, they turn like that and have a little meltdown. So I just thought that was kind of funny. I'm sure you guys can relate in some of your your jobs, you know, where you, you just try so hard to be nice to people. They're so rude, and then the minute you kind of give them something back, like I'm fond of in the golden rule, go, 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 golden rule, treat others how you want to be treated. And uh, so just another encounter. I'm super curious to see on Wednesday how that if he's going to change his demeanor at all, if he's going to be the same way, because I'm going to keep my same energy and I match your energy. If you're nice and polite to me, I'll be nice and polite to you. If you want to come on and be a dick, uh, I'm going to start giving it back because uh, I, I just don't understand it. Um, it's funny because my boss, hold on, let me uh, let me get this fan cranking a little bit. Your boys, your boys' pits are starting to, your Brad pits are getting an Elon Musk. Um, so over the weekend, we had like a, I'm not going to call it a block party, but we had a little, neighborhood soiree where one of the guys in the neighborhood's a big mechanic biker just mr fix it all you know he had a mini bike race where he gets a bunch of his his cohorts out there and they ride on the mini bikes and just kind of have a little race going up and down a couple driveways with cones and everything set up it's really it's really fun um i was trying to convince my boss or my brother or a couple other guys to get on there because i don't really ride bikes on motorcycles i'm not gonna try to do it and get hurt and be the laughing stock for everyone else but luckily for me there was a a few men that were more than willing to take up that onus so you know we're sitting out there we're all bullshitting talking shit having some fun um me my brother my dad my neighbor who's my boss his stepdaughter his wife a couple of their kids like we're all just shooting the shit having fun um and i just start noticing you know the energies the energy's picking up the guys are starting to get a little more into it. You know, at first they're just riding side by side, having a good time. But now you start noticing guys are, you know, they're getting around the corner, they're cutting through grass. They're trying to beat each other. Like it's getting a little more intense. Um, there was a gentleman who I did not know who looked like a, an all American man who you would think, you know, smokes his cigs and drinks his bud heavy. He had a, not a nice little Fu Manchu rocking. And like, I don't know the guy's name. So I, I just started calling him Fu Manchu. You know, he's, he's riding around the lap. I'm screaming, let's go Fu Manchu. 
so this gentleman is going on. He's, you know, he was there an hour before the race started warming up, getting his laps in, just doing the damn thing. So he's finishing up one of the laps or one of the races. I can't remember. And he, he slides out. We don't make anything about, oh, he fell. Long story short, 20, 30 minutes later go by. The ambulance is showing up. He's getting taken out on a stretcher, getting transferred. Motherfucker broke his ankle, right? So Fu Man Cheesy's down. A couple of the other guys are, we got a couple of other Patriots stepping up. We got a boy in the Canadian tux, you know, jeans. And a, I think it was a cutoff denim jacket, with no sleeves, no undershirt, had his little belly hanging out. It was fucking beautiful. Um, he was really getting his laps in, his reps in, making the best of it. But, you know, 20, 20, 30 minutes go by after uh, Fu Manchisi gets carted away and uh, no one's riding. We, we kind of think it's done. And to me, that would have been a good time to kind of call it. You know, you get one pretty serious injury like that. That poor guy's not going to be able to work for a while. And I, I think it's just time to call it quits, right? But no. Canadian Tux boy, you know, he's doing a lap and I noticed he's got his, I think it was a PBR, just fucking American as fuck. He's got his beer can in his mouth like for those of you who are just listening which is 98 percent of you uh, he's got the beer can in his mouth and he's got the the circumference of the beer can just in his mouth while he's got both hands on the handlebars and just holding the beer can around his mouth and taking little sips by bobbing his head up and back you know wetting his beak a little bit so my dad's just like oh man these guys are starting to get alcohol involved this is not going to be good and this is literally probably five to ten minutes like before he said that and five to ten minutes later this happened where, you know, a fresh rate starts. We wave the flag. The checker flag is being waved. The boys rev their engines. They're off. And within 10, 15 feet of starting, one of the guys pops a little wheelie. You know, the crowd goes wild. Nice little wheelie. Executed it well. Uh, then our sweet little Canadian tux boy. Man. I mean, this, this was truly brutal, honestly. He, he, he tries to go do the little the wheelie. And as he does it, like the bike is the back wheel is coming under where his, his fucking gooch is like he's standing upright, but the wheel is coming under him. So the bike is like inverting. And I watch this in real time, like it literally seemed like slow motion as the bike was inverting under him, his hands and legs go behind him. So he is almost like planking in midair. Right. And he his plank turned a little more downward into a downward plank. And he leads with like his orbital bone fucking crushing on the cement. Not only that, but there was nothing to break his fall. He literally hit orbital first. And then the momentum of the bike, you know, carrying him like it, obviously I just mean up to the point his orbital hit. And then he slid like another two feet. I mean, my people ran over to him. They were put, trying to give him ice packs and shit. I, I just got, I felt so bad in the moment. I, I had my, my burnt ends cooking anyway, but I was like, this is, this is my cue to get out of here. You know, I don't, it's funny. Cause I talk about how much MMA I watch and I'm one of those guys will scream when the knockouts are early in a fight, a girl arm barred another girl and she fucked her arm up so bad, probably broke her arm or her elbow or something. And I was cheering and screaming, but like when you're there in person and you see someone face plant like that, I, I mean, it was, it was brutal. And I'm just like, okay, that's enough. Uh, my brother stayed out there, continued to mingle, which, you know, I'm definitely not the strongest mingler in the block on the block. I'm definitely, uh, you know, the way I am is if I'm at a group gathering like that and I, I'm around, like I was around four to eight people that I, I like being around. They're super fun to talk to. We were having great banter. Uh, someone there actually has a fouler mouth than me. Shout out to Lainey. Uh, yeah, she's got a sour mouth on her, and I was I was impressed, but also kind of disappointed in myself. I thought I was one of the kings of the castle. And, you know, the, the cursing, I was talking to her mom about that because it's just something I'm so fascinated by. You know, for you people out there that have kids or you're getting ready to have kids or your kids are young, I'm so fascinated by this dynamic of cursing, right? So when I was younger, my, my mom, like, we couldn't say fart. We couldn't say shut up. We couldn't say idiot, like, Words that seem so simple on the surface, we were not allowed to say. They were forbidden. So we would use things like pass gas or did you make a vapor or could you be quiet or you're not an idiot, you're silly. Yeah. So as you can imagine over the years, you know, I'm just being told I can't say the, the simplest words. Just kind of a little fire in my little tailpipe, right? So I definitely... 
especially the amount of stories I tell in the conversation I'm in, that that F word, like what it can do for a story and it, it can literally, I know people, some people say like when you're talking like this on a podcast or doing comedy or whatever the case may be, when you're cursing and saying the F word a lot, it's just proving like lack of content or whatever the case may be. Um, but I don't know. I, I just always have found, I kind of lost my train of thought there because I was looking at the computer because I thought the stopped recording, but it in fact did not. Um, so yeah, the, the cursing thing, like if you have kids, do you restrict the cursing? Do you make it seem like, oh my God, they learned the F word. It's really bad. Cause you know how kids are. You tell them they can't do this and they just want to do it even more. Like growing up, it goes into hand in hand with the cursing thing. Like my brother and I were big fans of Grand Theft Auto or Austin Powers. Like those two stick out right away because we learned how to, we got into Grand Theft Auto at my sister's house growing up. Her boyfriend had it. We got into it playing that. And then we, we bought it and brought it home or borrowed it. And my mom, like she would find us playing it. She would go in and take the disc out, throw the disc away and do that. And I'm like, do you not think we're going to go searching and, so we would do anything we could to find the disc. Austin Powers, she would do the same thing, throw it out. We go rummaging through the trash cans, which now is so funny to me because it comes full circle. My mom is, I mean, she's a hoarder. Let's just, let's call a spade a spade. She'll, she'll get like, we'll buy, I'll buy a bottle of bourbon. She likes the bottle. She will do anything in her power to keep the bottle. She'll buy like a bottle of dressing or a sauce. And she thinks the bottle's cute. So she'll keep it. So I'm just like, I'll get these bottles that she's obsessed with. I'll throw them out. And then she goes digging through the trash, just kind of how like we were doing. So just, I just thought of that and it kind of <laughs> came full circle there. But um, yeah, the, the cursing thing, like I said, it was super restricted for me. And that just kind of made me want to turn the other cheek and go absolutely berserk with it. Church, I've talked about that being somewhere. We were really forced to go to church, you know, and it was really pushed down on us. And now as I've gotten older, I just have no desire to, to keep up with the church anymore and it's not a bad thing I, I appreciate you know the sentiment behind it and it, it definitely taught me a little bit of respect I guess I, I don't know how much but I don't know so yeah we were just sitting out there shooting the shit um I think I had maybe one glass of whiskey later in the fight no I didn't no so just smoking on my little bit of sheep there in the fight so I was talking about doing like a crazy mushroom trip. Uh, I took them a real small amount. I don't really know what microdosing is, so I've never done it. When I used to take shrooms back in the day, we would jump right into it, right? And just do between two and four to five grams at a time and just kind of be like that. So this time I just, on Fridays, I get done work early and I just want to come home and just kind of dabble and see what the smaller doses can do. So I think I took 0.8, you know, two little, uh, two little, stems with a cap on each one popped them in and man it just if you guys have never done them and you're curious about them just doing a, a dose like that where you're not going to get any visuals you're not going to hallucinate or trip like go crazy tripping but i just had a really intense body high i had this like really crazy it's so hard to explain like just this connection to the like i was just laying outside in the sun with my dog and I just felt like all me and the grass blades were all intertwined and connected. And I was, you know, as they grow, I sprout. And as they sprout, I grow. It's just a really weird connection. It's very hard to explain, but it's, it's awesome. Um, no doubt about that. So yesterday I definitely upped the scale a little bit and I don't plan on really doing these again for a little bit. Cause today I definitely felt like hungover and sluggish. Still got a headache and ate a nice little banana oat breakfast and, Still didn't knock it out. So I'm definitely feeling a little loopy, but it's funny. Last night we were, uh, you know, on the come down, I was going to play Xbox with my brother and my friend Sharif. And then uh, one of my boys, Michael, I haven't played with in a while, a while, sent me an invite. And I was just like, should I do it? Like, you know, I, I have no problem. Obviously going on here, I made that more than clear, like being myself and being my weird ass self and, it's kind of like this, like I said, a double life that I feel like I've always been hiding, but I'm just like, whatever, I'm weird as fuck. I call myself Fred or Fred Corn. So I was like, do I really want to invite Mike in in this state of mind where I'm being this weird? Fuck it. Let's invite him. So, you know, I'm referring to myself as the Corn Lord. I'm just making all these weird jokes. We're all laughing, having a good time. I'm fucking 
higher than hell, just playing Call of Duty. I was creaking like hell. I was stinging one, cracking one, beam crack down, you know, just beaming one, cracking one, down in the other, getting his teammates coming in for a revive, tapping, tapping. Uh, Crystal Buck, aka Kurt, was absolutely on a on a beam device. He was lasering everything in sight. Twelve kills. We got the fucking dub dog. I mean. Walrus, uh, his, his name used to be Tropical Walrus, and then it was just Mike or whatever. I was calling him Tropical Sea Creature, which me and the boys were having a good little laugh about. Um, just us four, you know, first time playing together in a while. First game, first win. We were fucking going ham. We followed up with a couple more fun games and just a, a good time. And, you know, I, I just really enjoy – he was, I don't know if he was trolling me or what, but I was talking in the beginning, saying some shit. He's like, hey, you should start a podcast. And I don't know if that was a light troll on me for like already doing one. He's making fun of me or if he's being sincere. And I'm like, I was too scramble brain to say, but I was like, you should live in the verbal government. So uh, something else I kind of want to get into. Uh, I'm a big fan of the TV shows, right? I'm always trying to find something new to watch, documentary shows, anything like that. So I've been hearing a lot about that Chris Pratt show, and I just started that last night. But a TV show I just finished, which I'm going to recommend to all you guys, which I'm, I was so blown away with. I was so surprised by it. The Bear on FX. Uh, for any of you guys that have watched Shameless, I, I guarantee right away you'll like this just due to the fact that uh, I think Jeremy Allen White's his name, but he played Lip, Lip Gallagher in Shameless, one of the, the better characters of the show. He's... um like this amazing high level chef, chef de cuisine. Right. And he goes all around the country, working at all these amazing restaurants, learning about the cuisine, but he's got a uh, family ties to uh, like a beef restaurant, in Chicago, like beef sandwiches, you know? So long story short, the brother, his brother was running the shop. He passed away. So Carmi, which is the main character's name, who's lip from shameless, he kind of comes in to try to revive and turn this restaurant around. And it's just a really unique show because like, I obviously worked in a restaurant for a few years. So it was a little more meaningful to me, I guess you could say, because I could really connect with the lingo and connect with some of the storylines and the plots they were going into. But even if you're not, I mean, this show just showed the, a kitchen culture, right? Where a new guy's coming in, he's trying to change the way things were being done, all the resentment he's faced with just an incredible show. You really get connected with the characters. You really grow to like it. Um, unfortunately, I was reading that I don't think they renewed a season two, but the way that show ended, it really leaves it open for interpretation about what could be next. Uh, check it out. If you guys are curious about a new show, they're, they're like, it's on Hulu right now, or if you have FX now or whatever, it might be on there. But the episodes are between 20 and 40. I think the last episode is like 45 minutes. I cannot recommend the show enough. It was absolutely phenomenal. So, so good. Um, just like I said, I don't know if I've ever really seen, like I love obviously the bar rescue type shows with the scripted series and the reality and the drama and all that kind of crazy shit. But this show really gives you a look into the kitchen life. Uh, anyone out there who's a chef or has worked as a chef, like my cousin Joey, he does that kind of work. I think he would really enjoy this. I'm going to reach out and let him know. Uh, it's just a, just a really cool show and it was unique and it was different, a, a much different spin than, the normal, you know, the cop or the criminal shows, the murder documentaries or any of that stuff you're out there seeing. I know I'm kind of jumping around here, but this is kind of the point I just had a thought about. Just a quick basketball point um, with the Sixer season ending in extremely disappointing fashion, you know, and then we saw James Harden, who's a, a big acquisition we got in the offseason, super high, high basketball IQ. He's got a very big contract that was on the hooks that we were due to owe him. He had a $47.1 million player option for next year that he opted out of, which was huge. Um, you know, given a guy that's getting up to his age with his declining skill set rapidly approaching, I mean, you can tell, you know, he lost a step or two for sure. He's still got the passing capabilities. He's still got the brain. Um, he can still shoot. So if they can find a way to work out that and restructure it and bring him back for a a fraction or a portion of that 47 million. I'm going to be ecstatic. Uh, they already get signed to Newell or Daniel house and PJ Tucker. Uh, the PJ Tucker controversy or deals a little, little weird. I think it was like three years, 37 or 33 million. He's 37 or 38 years old. Um, not much of an offensive presence, but if you guys follow the NBA, he is notoriously known as like a tough guy as an enforcer chemistry guy, a locker room guy, like, uh, 
a glue guy, if you will, you know, kind of helps keep everyone together, gives you that competitive edge, gives you that spark. Uh, he was huge in the playoffs this year for the heat. Was he on the heat? He's been all over the place. I think he was on the heat. So the Sixers got both of them so far. Um, I'm feeling pretty good about their offseason. If they can work out a deal with Harden and get him back for a little bit lower, and then there's some rumblings about a couple other additions they might be able to make here and there. So I'm just excited to see what they're going to do. And, you know, I hate to say it, but their window is coming to a close quick. I think they're going to have this year coming up and maybe one or two years left before Embiid really starts declining quickly or being hit with injuries or asking for a trade request. I mean, you can see with Durant and all these superstars now, it's, doesn't really matter if you're locked up under contract with the team. If a guy wants out, he's going to get out. Um, Bill Simmons has talked about a bunch, like the the new era of superstars, how it's it's their league, and they command what they want to do. If they want to go somewhere, if they don't want to – I mean, we were just talking about James Harden. That guy's forced himself out of two to three spots already at this point. So now I think with Philly, he's here. Sees they got a pretty good core, and he's willing to take a little bit of a pay cut. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said – I've been having a couple issues recently on uh, the podcast as far as having people that'll say they'll be on and then they stuff happens, which I understand. I'm not criticizing anyone. I'm just, it, it kind of puts me in a tough spot because now I'm trying to figure out the best way to approach this, right? Where if I want to do these Monday solo episodes and a Friday guest episode, like last week, the one that I released Friday, Diesel Juice, if you haven't listened, definitely go check it out with one of my buddies, Nick, who I met from work. Um, I did that on, I think, a Tuesday night. You know, because I was planning on having someone on last Friday, but he ended up canceling it. So I was able to have that contingency plan in place. So it's just kind of forcing my hand to think of some more options and be a little more creative on the fly. If I have to do solo episodes two times a week to cover it, I definitely will do it. But I think um, it's been very nice. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but for my personal opinion, it's been very nice to break it up, to have me kind of rambling on just thoughts and stories from the weekend. Cause that's honestly like how it originally started. I was trying to do it with Mike and then we were both trying to fit in like our conversational points without having a structured segment plan of like you talk here, I talk here, which we didn't want to get into that and water it down too much. But I also have a lot of things I like to talk about and you could say one story and then it brings up a memory with me. And then I want to go on that, which is kind of playing into my, attitude on the, the guest episodes where I just ask their questions on anything that pops in my brain. They have a thought that it makes me go. Then I run off that. And I've just been really enjoying that. So um, uh, I'm just going to call you out, Sam. You're a flake. You've told me two to three times you'll be on. You told me this morning you'd come on. You told me last week you'd come on. Um, you know, I think we'd have a pretty good conversational points. I definitely want to highlight some of the things you brought up in the last couple of days and let the people know about it, give your side of that. But he's very cultured as far as the mimosas, the wines, the oysters, the Chardonnays, the clams, the fine dining. Uh, he's eaten mushrooms quite a bit. Last week, he was just alluding to the fact that potentially he was microdosing at a strip club and getting a stripper's phone number for dinner the next week. Uh, again, I don't know how much of that I believe, Sam, but you're going to be called out now. This is the third or fourth time you flaked on me. We could talk about Buckhead Shore. We could talk about growing up together, having some fun. And if you don't want to do it, fuck you. But don't keep telling me. Uh, the Nugent Twins, we got some steam with that. I'm going to try to get them on. Uh, for those of you who don't know, one of my best friends growing up, Brian, I've talked about it before, but he had a very awesome, uh, his mom's side of the, like I knew a couple cousins from his dad's side of the family, but mainly, mainly his mother's side of the family. Just unbelievable like all of his cousins are freaking amazing and he had two twin cousins that i just have such a great relationship with we have so many good memories uh they've gotten into mma and the, we were talking about bets over the weekend so i just want to get them on to talk about swim club memories you know the fact that their mom thought i was just a terrible scum of a human and just just bullshit and talk so definitely trying to figure out a more smooth way to approach this i, I don't know if you guys can tell but I just bought a 1080p camera, so the quality went up a little bit. I just got this cute little microphone, a pretty legit little micro microphone with a little tripod and a little noise filter. So I'm hoping the audio is definitely going to continue to get better. I don't notice any major issues as far as on my end since I've been listening. Uh, the last episode, 
Nick's audio is definitely a little bad here and there. Like I alluded to the country bandwidth was definitely playing a role in that. Um, so I'm definitely trying to make tweaks. Like right now I got a fan on, it's making a little bit of noise, but I'm hoping this is going to help cycle that out. Um, you know, something I uh, discovered last weekend, which that's kind of a weird way to end it, but you know, I just thought it was fascinating. The more you learn, right? Um, the, there's a difference out there between double X and two XL. Now I had a, a gentleman who worked in casual mail XL or something like that. And he was kind of pinpointing to me all the different options as far as plus size clothes go. And it was just, it was a, a whole nother rabbit hole. I was really curious about, you know, when you get the, the way I've remembered it so far is like XXL is longer clothing and two XL is wider. And the way I remember that is like, fuck, I think I just fucked it up. Uh, I think the two XL is longer and the XXL is wider because XXL is like wider than two X. If you write them down, why the fuck did I just bring that up? Um, I think that'll be a good way to end it. Uh, yeah. So happy for the July. I'm sure you guys are all enjoying your day, having fun, chilling at the beach. Here I am sitting inside recording a podcast, but I enjoy this. This is fun for me. So everybody enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great week and please listen to this, rate it, subscribe it, review it. Uh, let your friends know about it. Just trying to spread the word and get, get this out to as many people as I can. So the more you guys can help me with that, I'll be so appreciative. Uh, I'm closing in on close to 600 listens now, which obviously is not much, but it's huge for me. It's just showing, you know, that after two to three episodes, I didn't just flame out and I'm not just going to flame out. I'm going to try to keep consistent. Like my one buddy was texting me this morning about, man, I thought with the one cancellation, it was going to kind of get in your head and let you spin out of control, but I see you're still staying on top of it and just keep going. So even there's going to be some weeks where like today, I don't feel like it's as much of a funny episode. I'm just kind of rambling, but it's a lot, you know, I feel like I can almost shine better when I have someone on with me to kind of ramble and not ramble to banter with back and forth and have my thoughts really spewing out of control. Whereas here I'm trying to stick to like, right now I got, you know, eight to 10 things I wrote down to try to follow and stick to that and just get my thoughts out there. So, like I said, thank you guys again for listening. Verbal garbage. I think this is episode number 12. I'm going to try to start numbering the episodes and make it a little more easy to follow as far as my head goes so I can celebrate when I do the hundredth episode and things like that. So um, as you can see, I'm trying to figure out how I set up the background a little bit better. I got my little snap on garden gnome, the little wrench, fucking sexy little bitch, big beard, nice sunglasses, the little hat. So trying to figure out a way I, I've dabbled and looked into buying a green screen behind me, but I don't know what I put on. Like, I don't know how that really works. So just bear with me. Audio is the main part right now. And, I'm making a concerted effort to continue to upgrade and improve the quality of everything regarding the show. I'd like to get an intro song going, but I have yet to figure out how to incorporate that. I've done a couple of little rough drafts, but it was so weird. So, um, yeah, until uh, later in the week, I'm going to try to get someone on Wednesday or Thursday, something like that to have a contingency plan. Cause again, this weekend I'm supposed to be getting my boy on. And then, uh, next week, Tuesday, I'm going out of town for like seven days. So I probably won't have an episode there unless I can. I'll probably do an audio only one from my phone and uh, upload it through that way. And maybe talk to one of my sisters or my niece or nephew or something like that. So again, long rambling outro, getting to the point. Thank you guys for listening. Peace.